All right, we're here with uh, Amir Abdallah, a guy we haven't talked to in a couple of weeks. Uh, enjoying Ramadan, huh? I am. I am. Thank God. Hi, Jody. How are you? Good. How are you? Everything is great, man. Thanks. Are you hungry? Where are you at? I'm in the Middle East. I'm in the country of Jordan. So you can eat right now, right? You're good, isn't it? You can eat it's, after dark? Uh, it's 2 a.m., so I'm good. You're good. All right. All right. Well, well, enjoy your food while you can, right? You can only eat after sundown, sundown to sun up. That's correct, Jody Cohen. In the 15 uh, years we've known each other, you're finally getting it down. I'm there with you in spirit. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. Well, let's talk about some of this Middle East stuff going on out there as the, uh, the Saudis continue to uh, are continuing their takeover of the boxing world, it seems. Um, just had, of course, coming up a couple of big events out there, and now we're looking forward to the next stream. We got uh, Tyson Fury and Usyk coming up, of course, and then following that, what we haven't talked about, June 1st is uh, maybe not the, the casual fan might not be knowing so much about it, but but the hardcore fans for sure are really looking forward to this B-ball and, and Baturbia fight um, June 1st out there. Tell us a little about that fight and, and what you see playing out. Well, first of all, um, you know, I, I'm very proud to, to to see what's happening in the Middle East, of course, with uh, the General Entertainment Authority, uh, His Excellence Turki al Sheikh, and what he's doing is phenomenal for the sport, and it's good for the sport. You know, if it was if it was detrimental for the for the ecosystem of the sport, if it was detrimental for you know the future of the sport, you could say, you know, maybe it's not happening at the right time, or there's you know, it's not good for the for the uh, for boxing for the sport. But it's not. It, the best fights are being made. Everybody's coming together. I mean, you got, you know, Frank Warren and, and Eddie Hearn working together. These are the guys that, you know, professionally they were, you know, uh, enemies uh, or, or, or rather, you know, on opposite sides of the sword, um, rivals. And now they're coming together because, you know, there's a common ground, which is, you know, a huge upside in being able to, to help the sport and to be able to build the sport. And that's what's happening in the kingdom. So it's it's great for the sport, um, and, and I and I listen. I I have my ear to the ground, and, and you know, especially in boxing in the boxing world, and I hear a lot of the, the the positives, and I hear you know some of the naysayers, and the people that really are the naysayers are the ones that just aren't involved. There is nothing, nothing that you could say about boxing and the movement in the Middle East that is detrimental, harmful, sets the sport back by any means. If anything, it's given the best guys an opportunity to fight. A very similar model to what the UFC is doing. The best fight the best, and that's just the way that it works. And and those are the fights that you're seeing. I mean, look, you could you could make an argument that you know throwing Naganu into the mix could be you know more of the hybrid kind of a fight. But look, the guy realistically put on a great performance against Tyson Fury. You know, even though in the beginning it came out as kind of an entertainment show, and I think that's what it was meant to be. And I said, you know, Tyson was going to ice him within three rounds. Um, and, and and Mike Tyson and I used to have these debates, and he was like, man, wait till you see Nagano, wait till you see Nagano. And, um, uh, you know, he, he put on a great performance, which led him to the AJ fight because, you know, boxing fans were surprised. They were shocked. I was shocked um, of, of how it turned out. But AJ did what he needed to do. Uh, you know, the boxing world was on fire after that, I don't think I've ever seen more videos go viral from that highlight reel. And unfortunately for Nagano, you know, he ended up, you know, on on that side of the sword that 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 you know he, he came up with the, a loss. And AJ, you know, carried boxing and he showed that listen, an Olympic gold medalist. This is why he is, you know, arguably one of the top two or three heavyweights in the world today. Kind of interesting. We had, uh, you know, of course, especially after the fact, you know, after. Uh, and Ganu fought Fury, you know, everyone's like, oh, you know, he might, can he beat AJ, you know, and then a lot of people predicted, you know, he's the next big thing. And then, of course, you know, like typical boxing fans, and he goes out and has a, you know, a poor performance, and he's horrible, he never belonged in the ring, needs to go back to MMA, that kind of thing. But do you think the the Middle East out there's kind of given us kind of the best of the both worlds, right? You know, we're getting the, you know, those those interesting fights, you know, in, in Ngannou and Joshua, what might happen. And then we're also getting, you know, like the one I mentioned before, the Bivol Materbia fight coming up, which is, you know, any fan's going to be excited for that, um, you know, quote, unquote, you know, the hardcore fans. So, uh, you know, they're kind of giving us the best of both worlds. Well, I mean, it, uh, yes and no. Yes, and that that did happen. No, and that, you know, um, His Excellence Turki Al-Sheikh had said in a, uh, an interview on the zone, he said, listen, we're just not into that, 
kind of, you know, the YouTube hybrid kind of thing. We would really want to do real fights and big fights. And look, I'm a boxing purist. Mind you, I've dabbled. I mean, remember, we, Jody, we did, you know, I, I managed KSI when he did the Logan Paul fight. And, you know, on that card, you had the undercard of the pro debut of Logan Paul versus KSI was Devin Haney versus somebody and yeah. Billy Joe Saunders for, was somebody. And they sold out the Staples Center. So you, you can't totally discount what that side of the sport does, but it's not pure boxing. And I'm a boxing purist. You know, I, I love real boxing. And of course, you dabble in the other side of it because it does draw no more eyeballs and, and there's marketing and there's huge revenue um, on that side of it. But the, the real boxing, the, the pure boxing are the fights that are being made. And that's very exciting. So, yeah, uh, Better Bia versus Bivol is going to be an amazing fight for fight fans. I mean, you're talking about the two best light heavyweights in the world right now. Um, you know, Bivol, of course, huge, huge momentum spike against you know with with the casual boxing fans when he when he defeated canelo and you know to canelo's uh, benefit and to his you know um to his credit i mean he really i hate to say put bivol on the map but he made him you know a mainstream name he was like who's this guy that beat canelo alvarez he beat you know the face of boxing or one of the faces of boxing and then uh and then after that you know bivol had the fight in abu dhabi against um uh, oscar's uh, golden boys guy uh, ramirez Gilberto Ramirez, and then recently, of course, he just won the uh, the fight on the uh, on the uh, day of reckoning fight um, with Lyndon Arthur. So, you know, he's he's lined up to fight the best guys, and 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 then you got you know arguably the heaviest hitter in the history of light heavyweights, uh, Artur Berbiev, um, Canadian kid. I mean, twenty wins, twenty knockouts. Guy's just a killer. I mean, he he hurts everybody. I mean, you and I both know, uh, you know, somebody that went to training camp with him. And man, I mean, he made a video about. It. I'm not gonna. It, Lonnie, Lonnie Thompson, who was, you know, in the gym. Lonnie is. I've seen Lonnie beat the brakes off of top two, three uh, rated guys in the world. And Lonnie is one of the most gifted, slick fighters. In both, you know, at 68 when he fought there, now 75, and he's really one of the only guys that can last in camp with Better Bev. But you know, the stories that he comes back with are just crazy. Like he's like, there's it's unhuman power. You know, and, and he fought. Fun. Lonnie doesn't like to give credit to anybody. But Lonnie well, doesn't like to give credit. <laughs> right. Lonnie so doesn't he, like to give credit to anybody. So when he's but, saying that someone's good, yeah, you gotta you gotta believe him. And I told him, I mean, we were talking about it. I was like, Lonnie, man. Maybe, you know, you tell the brother, you know, thank you for the opportunity. But he's like, man, I got to go up there. He's like, I'm the only one that survives up there with the guy. He goes, but man, it's tough. It's like it's a tough paycheck. It's a tough paycheck. Um, and you saw what he did with Callum Smith. Nobody does that kind of stuff to Smith, Yard, Joey Smith, Marcus Brown. Uh, I mean, you saw what he's doing to these guys. He, I mean, when he hits him, he hurts him. It's like the, it's like the, uh, you know, modern day Ivan Drago. So, um, that'll be a very exciting fight. And, you know, he's not a young man. Mm -hmm. There's always that argument of, oh, maybe, you know, it's the end for him. You know, he's almost 40 years old. Um, but, you know, sometimes you see these performances happen against these guys, with these guys, and and they put on, like Badu Jack. Badu Jack, at 38 years old, put on, I think, a career-defining win when he fought Makabu um, in Riyadh and, and, and won his third division world title. So you never know. I mean, sometimes these guys just get better with age. And, you know, Better Bev really hasn't been in any wars wars where he's old ring-wise. He might be older age-wise, but ring-wise he's not. Um, not to go down that path about talking, you know, that angle, but it'll be a great fight. And and now you've got, you know, the five-on-five five also, you know, Hearn versus uh, a Warren. It's fun. It's great. I mean, it's going to be competitive fights, and, and, you know, it's great for boxing. Now, the undercard of that, we got a – it seems like – the Saudis got a got a big thing for heavyweights up there. You know they're they're giving us every single possible combination, right? So we got a Zhang versus um, Wilder coming up on the same card, which is yep. a battle of the last two guys that that uh, Joseph Parker beat. Um, which is uh, you know I guess he's kind of a you know derailer of uh, hype trains, I guess. So we'll see if either one of those can get right back on it because I know everybody was high on Zhang up until the fight with Parker, and of course Parker dropped him. I mean, excuse me, uh, Zhang dropped him a couple times, but Parker got the decision. And then Wilder, you know, we don't know what happened. Um, didn't look great in his fight with Joseph Parker, but, of course, you know, one of the hardest punchers of all time, and he can change any fight with, you know, with one single shot. So that should be super interesting 
seeing those two go at it and see, uh, you know, which one of them can get back on their uh, on the right way. Yeah, what an amazing card that'll be. I mean, if you have you have the highlight of of the featured event, uh, you know, Bivol better be of, and then you have Wilder Zhang, and then you have the five on five on the undercut. Like, damn, it's, that's that's a hot card. That's I mean, it's a beautiful card. It's it's a it's a great card. It's what boxing fans are going to love. You know, when when you go to UFC events, from the opening bell, that place is packed from the prelims to the main card. You know, it's it's packed, and the fans love every single fight. And what what Dana and the UFC have done is every fight is you know in those divisions, whether it's the best prospect or the best prospect, the best top five against the best top five, the best top ten against the best top ten. You know, they match them where every fight's a good fight, and that is the model that I believe Saudi is starting to turn into. Not that they're copulating or, or emulating any one uh, entity, but I think what they are doing is giving the fans the best fight. So, you know, even me, I mean, I'm I'm a boxing fan, but when I have big events and big cards, you know, I look at that, the undercards, I'm like, okay, you know, I'll tune in maybe for the, for the featured bout, you know, for the the main support, for the co-main, maybe if it's a great card, you know, the third fight before that, but typically people are watching the main event and that's all it is. Mm -hmm. Um, I I always use the, the, you know, the, the example of when Floyd fought Maidana, I don't know if it was the first or second time, but on the undercard, there were Berto and Amir Khan both fought on the undercard. And those are big notable names, but the arena was almost empty. Yeah. You know, it was half full, a quarter full when those guys fought. Um, and, and I think that means a, it's a big difference. You know, you, you mentioned the UFC and I was recently in Puerto Rico for Jake Paul's fight and the Puerto Ricans, same thing. You know, that, that arena was half full from the, at the first fight. Yeah. Um, you know, which, you know, if you're at MGM here at the first fight, there might be literally 20 or 30 people in the crowd. Um, that crowd was hyped from the beginning and it just grew and grew and grew up until Jake got in there. And in, in Saudi Arabia, like I said, same thing, you know, you get that, you get that, uh, you know, the, the crowd in there going and get them, you know, building that excitement, you know, by the time you get to the main event, you know, everybody's stoked. And that's, I would love to see that come back to here rather than just like, you know, Hey, we're gonna give you one, you know, one to three good fights and the rest will be, you know, just some, you know, some people filling out space so yeah. you definitely gotta like what, what saudi arabia is doing as far as that goes is you know For giving sure. us multiple fights i mean you have was it uh, uh, Ford and, uh, uh nick ball on that card and yeah uh, uh hergovich and dubois i mean you have so many people coming up on that that card you know um yeah Ford just just kind of he's a breakout star right he just won a couple weeks ago his title nick ball uh, coming off a very impressive draw. so yeah so many fights to see so much to look forward to out there no, and, and and they're landing them. They're they're promoting them right. I mean, the the movie trailers are wild. Like it now, it's kind of like, man, what are they gonna do next? You know, when the when the very first uh, Fury Naganu trailer came out, I'm telling you, and I've said it before in past interviews, I watched that probably. I'm telling you, 500 times. My daughters love it. You know, they're ages eight, six, and four, and they love it. Like, Dad, can you please, Baba, can you please put on Bang Bang? You know, they just want to watch it, and they they watch and they love it, and it's it's fun, and it's funny, and it's it's invigorating, and it's you know, it's a hype. It's and then you know uh, the 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 AJ uh, uh, Horanus fight or Hellenius fight rather, uh, the Day of Reckoning, great trailer and i think they even got nominated for some awards like movie awards and emmy awards or things like that for for the trailer you know these things they're fun the fury Usyk trailers you know they're 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 out of the box they're they're movies it's entertainment and and i think that's exactly what the gea is doing is that they're pitching these things as you know entertainment and look at the great model that the wwe has done i mean they've turned wrestling into an entertainment show that's what it is it's a, it's i mean not this is you know by any means parallel to it but it's uh you know it, it's it's similar in how you promote combat sport you know i always say you know wrestling is like a male soap opera everybody just wants to, it's not even so much the wrestling part as much of what happens in it and when I, you know, I was in a wrestling event and i got kicked and thrown thrown into the crowd so i don't know how how much of a soap opera that was like your a, mustache definitely emulates and it, it resembles you it. like a, that i just had to yeah that's definitely a pro wrestling mustache like yeah I, that's what i was thinking of getting into the into the job you know after i got like that say, was a female that threw you into the crowd wasn't it what's that that was a female that threw you into the crowd wasn't it uh, well we don't need to talk about that she was a big I, mean, I didn't know why you didn't include that you said a wrestler threw she, you but you, i was ki- i was bl- i was kicked in the stomach when i wasn't looking picked up thrown into the crowd and then they had a chair thrown at me gender doesn't by, matter by a woman 
by a six foot two, 280 pound uh, Tongan. So yeah, that's, that's, that's no ordinary woman. So you got laid out Jeff slammed. Mayweather. You got body slammed by a woman. Okay. No, no, that's picked up and over her head and thrown. But Jeff Mayweather got knocked out by her. So, you know, them, them Tongans, that, that's no joke. Hey, you, know, you throw Jeff to the wolves a lot. Jeff got beat up also in the celebrity boxing fight. Yeah, we threw in the towel. I mean, you saved him. Yeah, we should. If I recall did. correctly. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of movies, you know, you, you, I see, I see you posting everywhere. You and your, your, your uh, adventures with Mike Tyson, um, every day on Instagram. It seems you're always posting something about you guys, uh, hanging out. How's that going? Great. You know, I represent Mike in the Middle East. I had a long time relationship with him. Um, we just did a two week tour. I went to Riyadh for the uh, the PFL launch there, which was a great event. Hung out in Riyadh for a while, caught up with a lot of old friends, and uh, he loves the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He has a wonderful relationship with His Excellency Turkiyat Sheikh. He has a lot of great relationships there, and you know he's of course got the Mike Tyson Boxing Club there. So he, we had a good time there, and then we went and we were uh, invited to Libya for their first ever professional fight, which was an interesting experience as well. And then, you know, that was just on the eve of the um, announcement of the uh, Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight. So, yeah, it's a lot of great things happening. You know, Mike's Mike's larger than life, man. He's just he just is. He's just and I always pinch myself and I'm around him like, man, this guy is just a living legend. That's just what he is. And he's 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 uh, just larger than life. man. Everywhere he goes, he just captivates people like the look on their faces when they see him. And that's what I do is I just watch people and how they you know look and they react to him. It's, it's phenomenal. Yeah, there's, I mean, I'm sure obviously Muhammad Ali, you know, was, was the same way, but the, the ones I've seen, uh, since I've been covering the sport for about 15 years, uh, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Mike Tyson, and then actually, uh, Tito Trinidad in, in, uh, in, uh, in Puerto, uh, Rico. Puerto Rico, there you go, was, that was chaos in there, but those oh, really? four yeah. I mean, in those, yeah. those Tyson, of course, and Floyd and Manny anywhere, or at least here just it's a different level i mean you know it's it's not when you know when sugar ray or tommy hearns these other legends come out it's still great but when though when tyson comes out i mean it, you can be right in the middle of a war in the ring and and the heads will start turning everyone's stepping up and look oh that's mike tyson and everybody's checking him out so he's definitely you, you know, know i made a mistake doing that at one of our events we brought mike to in new york and i had assumed i mean i had timed it where he was going to come out in between fights but when mike's ready to go he's ready to go he's like let's go now and i'm like it's actually not even in between rounds it's in the middle of the round but what like i said he wanted to move so we moved and when we did like nobody was watching the fight everybody watched mike get to his seat and sit down and you know the, the poor kids are up there it was like three fights from the main event it was a pretty good fight too but here, here's the thing like you said manny pacquiao manny pacquiao in the philippines will stop traffic Manny Pacquiao in LA will probably be quite special. And this is nothing against Manny because I'm a huge Manny fan. Uh, yeah. But Manny Pacquiao in the Middle East might not be massive. Like if he comes to Jordan or, uh, you know, I mean, he probably is because there's a huge Filipino populations everywhere, but it's not like Mike Tyson. Right. Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, those guys are really. Those are the two, yeah, that, right. They're, they're it's huge. amazing because, you know, Tyson hasn't been you know, uh, on top and, you know, well over 20 years. Uh, he's just such an icon of the sport and always will be.